Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor. And I know this is a polarizing topic for a lot of people, but Unity's AI selection has now got full integration with the Unity Editor. Now, their newest offerings for animate for creating humanoid animations and Muse Behavior for creating behavior trees and doing interactions with that, but they've also integrated Muse Chat so you can use that and it can start helping you directly in your project by giving code hints and suggestions because what I'm going to do is run through the setup and the usage and we'll see if we can break every no I'm only joking I won't break it or I'll try not to although I am very very good at breaking things because they do have a 15 day trial to check it all out and they will be adding some awesome new AI tools including sound and the ability to one click texture all of your 3D models and before you burn me down I'm not getting paid for Unity to promote this I'm just giving you all the news that you need so you can make the decision for yourself. You can actually navigate to the brand new muse.unity.com hub page and you can sign up for your free trial. And it does say that it uses a credit system or it will do in the future when it's out of all its beta testing. So you'll be able to use credits every single month to be able to do the generations. So in each of the cases, there's these boxes for chat, texture, sprite, animate and behavior. You can click on get started on each and then you can see that to install them, you need 2023 LTS or later, and you can install the particular package in Unity. So what we can do is click on Muse Chat and we can click Get Started, and it does have an ability to install directly, and then I can open this in the editor. So then it does import com.unity.muse.chat, and you can add that in the project manager, and I'm just gonna hit Add. Now it did install that, and it took a little bit longer than I would expect, but then it does say update this to pre-release five. So maybe I'll just update this to make sure that it's at the recent value. It did request that I restart the editor because a burst compiler had been updated. So then as you can see at the top bar, we've got Muse and then we've got chat. And when we click this, we've got a brand new dockable window, which we can ask a question. As you can see that I can select on an object and based on the selection, it will show that. And I can ask something about this game object. And I just asked it a simple question that what does the head bob do in relation to the asset that is selected? And it will look through this script and it'll be able to give me definitions and information on exactly what fields are used, exactly where I can customize it, and then options to be able to set things on where they need to be. Then it does have the ability to have its own history. And there's Unity's massive spring sale on at the moment with 50% off all the assets, but daily assets at 70% off. And I've got a website page updated every day and I'll put a community post so you never miss out on anything. And then if we use Muse Chat and we don't associate with a particular object, what could we do? We could create cubes that fall from the sky. So I've put create me a script which instantiates cubes which can fall from the sky over a given radius. And then control spawn rate, size, and let's see some of the other interesting features and see what it comes up with. And you can see it's generated me some code and some basic instructions. The positive is you can copy the code with the little suggestion in the corner, but it doesn't actually create these in Unity, which people have asked for and it may well come in the future. And it gives you basic instructions on how to do it too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new C sharp script, call that cube spawner. And I will paste that code in. There is no errors, which is always good. It does say that I need to create a prefab to be able to use. So I'll use this cube here. So what I'm going to do is I'll just drag that and create that into a prefab. Then I'm going to create an empty game object, which is going to act as the thing where I will spawn my cubes from. So I'll put this up there, which seems about right in 3D space. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the cube spawner and it's looking for a cube prefab. And then I can put the spawn rate at one second, the spawn radius, I'll keep that at five. And then the cube size we can specify, keep it at one, one, one. I'm gonna make sure that my cube prefab has a rigid body actually on it. So then it will fall down from the sky. Now you can see this, we have some cubes that are randomly spawning from the sky and they all do have physics so they will fall down hopefully i don't get crushed in the meantime obviously it would be better if we had pooling so we could go into further detail and ask it about how to do pooling but this was just a basic example for this so then if i get started with texture and again that is com.unity.muse.texture and i'll click add on that it's never good when we get a bunch of errors when we import the pre-release and i can't get rid of them so they look quite important so maybe what I need to do is upgrade to the latest version. I'm not sure why they don't install the latest version, 
but I'll try that again. Now when I have upgraded to the most recent version, which is pre-release 21 as of recording this, the errors do disappear, which is always good. And then you can see that I've got Muse and I've got the new texture generator, so we can use that and create that, so I'll dock that. So now we've got some options, so we've got generation, we can choose how many images it generates, and then we can have a prompt, negative prompt, and we can choose a colour or a shape that we want to use. I'm gonna to go to the input image at the bottom, go to shape, and I'm gonna choose the pattern as this brick. I'm just gonna type in regular brick. So we've got some brick examples. Maybe I like this image here. So what you want to do is you can create more variations. You can export this, upscale it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to upscale it to make sure that it's of higher resolution. And you can make edits to this if you don't like what it has generated. Once it's upscaled, you can use and view as PBR. And you can also use anything as set as a reference. So you can create this as, let's say, set as a reference image. And then we can make generations from that actual image that it's produced itself. So once it creates as PBR, we'll be able to use it in Unity. So you'll be able to see it here. I can see it in the little preview. And we can adjust it with how much height value, metallic smoothness, and what the tiling is by default, but that's okay. Then from there, you can just drag this straight into your assets, and it will export it out as a brand new material that we can use. So you can see that it's a regular brick, and it's got the input maps, and we can set the height intensity. So I'll just keep it at one for now. Smoothness and metallic. Wouldn't have any metallic value, but it might be slightly smooth whether the bricks wet or not i guess you could say so what i'm going to do is i'm going to dock that and i'm going to use it in my scene and i'm going to add my regular brick texture and as you can see we can tile this more suited to this scene so as you can see with the brickwork on this wall and they tile fairly well between the two as i say other than the lighting and the cubes are still spawning from the sky and so you can make easy generations and really customize these and as you can see you can increase things like height intensity and you can make things look metallic or you can make it look like wet brick on a really rainy day. Then if we want to try and install Sprite, that uses Com Unity Muse Sprite. Again, Sprite, that was a faster install but comes in as the wrong version. So I need to upgrade to the latest pre-release by clicking on the little button. Now, similarly with Muse Sprite, we can go to Muse and we can go to the Sprite Generator. It does in a very similar way to the texture generation and you can do have an input image of what you want this to look similar to. I'm just gonna create a prompt of, I want a monster chicken. And you can choose in this case that how much your style parameters should be because you can use the style trainer to take your sprites and the things that you've created with Muse and style trainer here. And you can add your own sprites and you can train it on this basis. So you can then select the style that you've trained and you can set whether how close you want that to be and you can actually remove the background. And again, like I said, you can input an image into here to use as a reference to get it closer. If not, or you can actually create something in terms of how you want the chicken to look. I'll create something random like that. And you can also then erase any of the scribbles and also use the sprite picker to pick sprites from your scene to be able to use this as an example, like a dragon chicken. So I do quite like this one here. You can make adjustments, so you can select this part of the face. And as I've drawn over that, maybe I just want to put something like cow head. See if that will generate something usable. So with the use of cow head, you can see that it started drawing the cow. But I'm not really sure I like that. You could save those if you want them. But I did like probably this one the most. So you then you can right click and you can either delete or export. You can drag this straight into your Unity scene. And you can see here that it's the sprite that I could then use within my own game. And I think it would be especially helpful creating UI icons if you've used the style trainer to be able to use that in Unity 2. Now for the two pre-release assets, which are animate and behavior. If I click get started in here, I'm gonna install the animation package. And you can see you can use com.unity.muse.animate and we'll add that in. Again with the animate tool, make sure to update it to the recent release. And then I can check that I've got Muse new animation generator and we can make this much bigger and you can see that we can select how many generations that we want to make. So maybe I want to make three different generations, duration, three seconds is fine. You can search through the library if you've created anything previously, but you can describe a motion. So I just want maybe human walk and it's created a walk cycle, which is quite nice and easy you can make this editable by saying make editable and clicking convert and then if you hit done it will make an adjustment of this 
and you can see that then we can select different points within this walk cycle and be able to adjust the position of the head or maybe the position of the body to be able to lean forward when this character walks. And as you can see on this, we have a little walk forward through the animation as if you maybe got hit in the stomach and you may have to double click back on the original animation to get it to play. And if you do want to export any of the animations, you can right click and export and you can see the default rig here with the animation and you can see that this animation is working inside Unity. And then you'll be able to translate this animation onto another character that you might use. And then last one but not least is the behavior and we can install that package too. And you can see again it's using the same definition but dot behavior and we'll add that as our last one. And to create a Muse behavior tree you have to right click and choose create and then choose Muse behavior and the behavior style graph. So it's not in that current context menu up at the top which does have its own sample scene and it uses some logic to try and determine what it's going to do. So it has different branches that you can right click and add and it's got events, flow, subgraphs, sticky notes and lots of helpful things. So you can unstart and you can see this one, it repeats. So I will play the demo. So you can see that this repeats over time. This object will proclaim what should I do and then it chooses a random option whether it should think about it and wait and then do it again or it should look for a random target, the target will call out, you can set a random target and then you can say that the target should pick that and then it should move to that target which is referenced. And you can see from the behavior graph agent, we've got the graph that's there, we've got the variables which are self, which is just the agent object, which is just the gray object there, we've got the target which it will find based on the objects that are in the scene and then the speed at which it will specify. And you can see that it can move to the target by that it understands that it sets a random target from the target list, from the tag of targets, and you can see all these targets do have the target tag, and you can edit the definitions of those things by set a random target, and then you can have an action, animation, flow, all different types of parameters, and then you can see that the target that it has picked that it's already found We'll have a sentence that it can say and how long that sentence should be spoken. So as you can see, there's a fair few things that you can do with the AI at the moment. And it's nice to see the integration into the Unity editor. So you let me know what you think down below. And remember, you can get your 15 day trial for this. And it is a subscription based model. So you decide whether you want to get it. And I think with the inclusion of the sound generator that is coming and then the big 3D model texturing generator, which they'll have too. I think it really goes to make a good suite of tools that are very usable. So be sure to check out my Patreon too to get over 225 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. And check out all the links below for all the sales, savings and everything you can find in game dev. And there's Unity's massive spring sale on at the moment with 50% off all the assets but daily assets at 70% off. And I've got a website page updated every day and I'll put a community post so you never miss out on anything. So a big thank you to Peter Steiner and everybody else who comes to watch the video. So don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.